So, good morning to all. Uh, in last class, we started talking about basic processing unit because actually uh, at the end of the day, uh, we will be talking about how control unit is designed. Control unit means different control signals are generated during different operation. That is why we are studying that what are the basic operation is required, what are the basic operations are required for some, uh, some uh, what is called is say as I said ki, say suppose execution of the instruction consists of different phases. So, within each phase actually what are the things happening? So, that we are looking into okay? and it depends on the which organization and what is the CPU, what is the internal structure of the CPU that is you need to uh, keep those things in mind. So, we consider a simplest structure of the CPU in the last class and we will keep on on the same uh, structure that if we wish to execute some instruction, so what are the operation is performing. So, how the basic uh, content of the registers are getting changed. Okay. So, that we will see. So, here uh, we discuss this part here, here also we said this is the basic structure. Okay. So, we will have a PC and it is a bidirectional, we have a MAR memory address register, it is unidirectional always, MDR is also bidirectional, MDR bidirectional with data line as well as it is bidirectional with the internal bus. And we have a register which is basically connected with ALU. As I said the ALU is the part in the, uh, in the CPU where actually actual performation or actual uh, uh, what is called is task is done like my task is to add. So, that addition is performed actually in ALU okay? and then we have a temporary register. So, these are the basic uh, architecture uh, sorry organization of the CPU. So, keeping those things in mind, now we will see if we wish to transfer data from one register to another register or we transfer uh, information from memory to other register how it happens. Okay? Involve these are the four basic uh, operation uh, for executing operation, it may be one or more than one are involved here. Okay? So, again same thing here only thing is that register when I say that it will have a internal control as well as it will have the external control. Okay? So, similarly here, but here is directly connected. So, there is no control. Okay? So, these are the uh, organization as I said here, this is also taught in the last class. This is also taught here arithmetic operation that is we are trying to say that say we want to add the content of register R1 to those of R2 and store the result in R3. Okay. So, basically the so let us say we want to add what is that add the content of register R1 and those to the R2 and store to the R3. Okay. So, basically we want it should be result should go to R3 contain of R1 plus R2. Okay. So, we stop at this point here. So, what is the step? Output of the register R1 and input of the register Y are enabled, causing the contain of R1 to be transferred to Y. Okay. So, what does it mean? We have to go back here in the diagram here. Okay. So, what I said is like what we want to do contain of yeah contain of R 3 basically we want to do R 3 should go to R 1 plus R 2. Okay. We want to add it addition will happen here only therefore, data should be arrived at this place. Okay. So, we have a register here that is register R 1 let us say this is R 1 we have a register R 2, we have register R 3. Okay. So, what we have to do? We have to add R 1 with R 2. 
So, therefore, we first transfer the data from R1. Okay. So, what we can do it, we can transfer data from here to here and we can bring from here. So, this is one path. Another data we can bring from here to here. So, this is the thing we have to do first. So, how do you get the data from here to here? So, simply what can we do it R1 out should be on, otherwise data will not come R1 out not in and then where it should go Y1. So, therefore, we have to put Y1 in. So, this should be 1 instead of writing 1 and 0, if it is 1 only we will write otherwise we will not write. So, therefore, it indicates that in is 1. So, now data is where? Data is here, one data. Then another is R2. What we can do it? One data is latched here. Now, what I do it? This data we want to place it here. So, next what we do it? R2 out, it is sufficient because data is here. Now, this data is here, I want to bring this data to here. What I do? I use this mask. Okay. So, I will select this line. So, this line is something called constant y line, this can be said is y. So, what you do it? R2 out, then we will say select y. So, we choose so, R1 is here, R2 is here. Next, what we, we have to do? We have to add. Add is a signal, it will come from the control unit. So, add is a signal. So, this is add. So, till now we, we did not say how control unit will be designed. We are just studying some background. So what are the things happen during some operation? So, add is a signal. Let us say add is a signal. So, instruction decoder decoded is addition operation and if there is a line, so add will be 1, that is all. So, and that is connected with ALU. So, then what is that? You perform the add operation. So, add to out, select Y, you perform add operation and you have to store the result to Z in. And in the next step, what you do it? Whatever the result is there, you store into R3. So, next step this is step number 1, step number 2 and step number 3 what you do it? Z out will go to R 3 in. First step is out of register R 1 and input of register Y are enabled. Okay. So, that means step number 1 if I write it here output R 1 out is enabled and input of register Y, Y in is enabled. So, data will be what, what is the task? R1 will be transferred to Y. So, step number 2, the multiplexer select signal line is set to select Y. Okay. So, therefore, if, 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 see whether you write first this one and this one, it does not matter because within the step, it will be happening parallelly. So, you can write Y1 first and then R1 out, out later is also fine. Okay. So, then what you do it? Uh, select signal set to select Y causing the multiplexer to get to the content of the register Y to the input A of the ALU. So, what you do? Select, select Y. So, therefore, R1 is in ALU, but what you have to do? You have to bring the second data. Okay. Oh, it is written here. Okay, I could not see. So, R1 out, Y in, then R2 out, select y add and z in that is why i wrote just few minutes before and then results is available in z so you store the result into r3 in so this is not difficult so this is i already said that there should be r1 in and then r1 out this is diagram already explained now we are adding two register content and storing into other register now, what we want to do? We want to fetch a word from the memory. We are not fetching the instruction. We wa want to fetch a word. Okay? Word means data you can consider. Instruction is different, data is different. As I said, add A, comma B, A or B are the data. Add is the instruction. Okay? From the day one I am saying. So, now what you do it? What are the operation 
signaling thing will happen while fetching a word from memory. What you have to do? You have to remember that structure, that uh, CPU structure. What is that? It has program counter, it has MAR and then a, it has MDR, then it has Y register, it has mask, then it has ALU, then you have Z in okay? and so on. So, that you have to remember. So, what is the first task? You have to get the data from the memory to CPU. So, you have to fetch it. For fetching this one, you need to know the location where it locates. So, therefore, it MAR that is memory address register will be loaded with the address. So, therefore, address into MAR and then it read the operation and data into MDR. This is simply. So, it has three parts. So, what is the first task? Location should be populated first that is with MAR and then it will request the read. So, it wishes to it wishes to read the data from the memory. So, here we go. To understand this, so we have a MDR register. So, as you, you can see, so MDR is something. Here we had MDR and then you have a say internal bus and then we put something like that. So, when we put a direction both way, then we should have in and we should have out. Similarly, here also we should have in and we should have out. So, to verify whether I am telling right or not, we can go back. What was there for MDR if you miss exactly? Okay? So, here we go. Okay? Let us say this is the MDR, we should go for MDR, right? This is MDR. So, what is there in MDR? You see both side arrow, this is arrow and this is arrow. Similarly, in MDR, the, this side is in and this side is out. So, ideally, both side is in and both side is out. So, MDR in, MDR out. To distinguish whether is MDR in is really inner side or not, so, we distinguish in two way that is the thing here we can check here the, this was the diagram. So, it, it has in as well as out. So, this is MDR in and sorry this is MDR in and then this is MDR out to towards the internal bus and to the external world that is memory we have also MDR in and MDR out okay, MDR in and MDR out, but to distinguish between two ins and two out, we put E, out E, out E means external, here is in E means internal, oh sorry external, MDR in external, MDR out external, other is MDR out and in MDR in, okay, for MDR. Okay. Now, what we have to do it, this is the fetching a word from the memory, how it is done? So, here is actually memory is much slower than the processor. Right. So, therefore, processor it wish to read the data because it is fetching means reading basically and then processor will wait until unless data is brought to the processor. So, therefore, there is a signal is called memory function complete. So, it will wait for the memory function complete after issuing the I need this data and it will wait. So, that, that is a also a signal. So, then the device that is the external device, when it is ready, so it will inform that I am ready, now data is available in the MDR. Now processor will take out the data from the MDR. Let us say fetching a word from a memory, what is the corresponding instruction? What do you want to do it? Move R1 to R2, but within bracket, as I said I think in addressing mode. So, if you have a bracket here, it indicate R1 is obviously a register, but it contains a memory location not the value. Value is actually it at the memory location. Okay? So, it is a indirect. Okay? If it is the value is there, so that is a direct. So, then what do you want to do? For this operation, what are the sub tasks are done? So, first whatever the content is there, because I, what I want to do? I want to fetch a word from the memory and which location? That location is mentioned in the register R1. 
So therefore, whatever the content of R1 that should be loaded to MAR. So therefore, first part will be MAR in should be enabled and then R1 out should be enabled. So now MAR is containing R1 value, R1 is a memory location and then it will request for read operation. So it will request for the read operation. So this is done started read operation. So I already mentioned it here. This is step number one. Next, what next? So that data has to be brought from the memory to CPU. It is only the address I place and it informed to the memory unit that I want the data from that particular location. Now it is the task of the memory unit to get the data and place to MDR. In between processor should wait. So therefore, what is done here? Wait for memory function complete from the memory. So it should be for wait for memory function complete. Processor will be waiting. And that memory unit where it will place the data in MDR. So MDR has two line from the external side. So therefore, which one will be enabled? That is MDR, it should be MDR in or out. So you go back. So data is coming through this one, right? So what is this one? MDR in. So here we have to have in and then external. So this is the meaning is this part and earlier meaning is this one. Now what you have to do, whatever the value is MDR that should be transferred to R2. How do you transfer? So next step it should be MDR, it will coming towards here, so it should be out and then it will store where in R2. So this should be R2 in or out in or to in. So that is the thing. So that is we are talking about here move R1 to R2. So we are fetching the word from memory to register. So here is move R1 to R2 as I said what you have to do R1 should go to MAR in and read issue the read operation and then processor will wait for memory function complete is whenever it when it will hide. So therefore, wait for memory function is a signal and in the between what will happen? Data will be placed in MDR I in E external, it, will, it is coming from the memory to towards the processor. So one data is available and this is done, what you have to do? MDR out, it is coming towards internal and then R to in, data is now entering to R to in. So therefore these are the three steps is done. Similarly, so let us say I want to store a word in memory, but earlier what was the case? I was bringing data from the memory to processor, now I want to store the data from processor to memory. So what should be done? I need the MAR because I have to identify where should be written. So then MAR should be there and I should know the location. So location should be populated with into the MAR, that is the first step. So that is the address is loaded into MAR. Now you have to talk about the, we got the address. Now what to write and then what to write means we once we get the content, so that should be populated to where MDR and then what you have to do, we want to write it, it is not read. So therefore, it is the right command. So we should write command should be issued. So now if we summarize address loaded into MDR that is very simple from where I want to write data from the contain of register move R2 to R1. So contain of R2 I want to move to location pointed by register R1. What I want to do? The contain of R2 basically want to place in some memory location. 
So, memory location means it is outside that diagram you have to always keep in mind ok, at least till the exam over. So, then what you have to do it first R 1 out and M A R in what is M A R memory address register that is the only connection for locating a place that is M A R. So, M A R should be you can write M A R in first also as I said you can write M A R in ok. So, you, you just uh, simply place M A R in first and then you second you can write R 1 out it is the same thing because within the same step it, it is working parallelly, it is functioning parallelly. So, therefore, R 1 out and M A R in is done. Next what, what you need to write? That should be available right? Here immediately you may ask sir we should write here write because earlier I wrote read. Same logic I could have written here write, but what to write? That is not yet ready. So, therefore, MDR should be filled with the data then only we can write because my location is fixed which location I will write, but what to write that is not fixed. So, therefore, you have to wait. So, what is that? R to content it should be populated to MDR should be populated with the content of R 2. So, R 2 out and MDR in. Why MDR in? If you remember here we had MDR and then we have a line from here let us say this is in and we had a line here. So, that is out and similarly we had a line from here and then we had line here. So, this is in E and this is out E. So, that was the case. So, then R 1 out MDR in then what I want to do? I want to write R 2. So, R 2 out and where it will go? He, this content. So, therefore, MDR in not E because this is on the this side it is going from data form let us say R 2 is here and then data is going here. So, therefore, R 2 out. Now, my location is fixed data is available now I will request for the write. So, now it is write. So, now processor will wait for the signal whether it is written or not. Written means what you have to do? This data should be placed. So, that is the MDR out E. So, MDR out E is done location is already enabled. So, you put MDR out E. So, here data will go this side and processor will wait for memory function complete. So, when we will have a multiple bus here is life is very smooth we have only single bus. Now, it is like we are talking about just a simple operation. Now, actually if I want to execute entire instruction then what are the steps? Just I showed you just add if you want to add what are the steps? Just I want to fetch the operand what are the steps? I want to write back the results this one. So, now I will say ki what are the or uh, getting uh, executing entire instruction what are the steps. So, what is the first step that is instruction is here is at R 3 R 1. First try to understand what is this instruction is instruction is the addition and the content of R 3 whatever it is there that is a memory location that means operand is there in the one operand is in the register R 1 another operand is the memory and that should be added and it will be stored into R 1. So, now what are the sub task what are the steps? So, first is fetch the instruction. So, you have to bring the instruction first and then you have to decode it after decoding it will realize the operand is there operand is again in the memory location. So, it is the fetch the first operand. So, it is fetch and then decode once decoding is done then you have to bring the operand. So, operand is its contain of the memory location pointed to by R 3 register R 3. Now, what you have to do? You have to the perform the addition operation. Once you perform the addition operation, now we store the result to R 1. So, these are the steps and then we have to write which sequence and why we are writing. For that you have to remember again that diagram that uh, CPU organization that we had program counter, we had MAR, we had MDR, we had ALU on the right side you had a register and so on and then we are executing this part. So, execution is complete it is like a pipeline stop stall at particular point. Now, he has to compute the penalty that pipeline if stall then how many times that pipeline stop, stop.
all okay he will come, he will calculate during examination on the right side is the diagram and then on the left side is the steps so first is you have to fetch the instruction from the memory so as i said the we have a program counter program counter basically indicate the location of the instruction whenever you put dot slash a dot out you wrote a program a dot slash a dot out means program counter will be loaded the starting location of the program and starting location you have let's say one instruction and that instruction happens to let's say this one and then we are what are the steps so first is program counter whatever the value are there in the what are the whatever value is there in the program counter that should be loaded with mar why mar because actually instruction is there in the memory you have to fetch the memory from the instruction from the memory and we learned earlier that if you want to fetch a word from the memory what we did we we supplied the to mar but here instead of from a register so that content is nothing but the program counter so that is the first step is program counter out that should content should come here it will issue the read operation so therefore it will issue the read operation and we also learn that program counter basically it points the location of the next instruction to be executed okay so therefore program counter should be ready for the next instruction right and if it is the word size is 4 so therefore if it start execution from the 2000 location so next instruction will be 2004 so then program counter should be changed to 2004 after fetching this instruction as i said this is addition operation 2000 to 2004 is addition operation okay and any kind of operation it happen alu so alu should be involved for that so what is done here is program counter value is placed to mar and then read operation so let the memory dis- bring the data and then what other things is happening so this value because it is placed on the internal bus it will come here also it will come here also but i allow that value to come this location so therefore what do we do it okay so i allow the value to come here so directly it will come same that value that is 2000 and i want to add it because value will change it will locate to the next instruction and from here what i do it i allow this value to come here so therefore i write select 4 so 4 will come hardcore 4 will come and then i issue the add operation and then i'll store the value z and this thing will all those thing will happen in a single step program counter value will be loaded to mar is no doubt and it will issue the read operation but for the next phase it has to prepare the next instruction how it will come so next instruction is locating if first one is 2000 next instruction will be in 2004 so therefore program counter will be loaded with 4 sorry 2004 so whatever the value of the program counter you brought it and then you add them and again you place this value to the pc in the next step so program counter will be loaded not this one not during this time so once it is complete in the next step what do you do it z will be out from here it will go to the pc in so therefore z will be out and pc in and processor will wait for the memory function complete because it was the read operation if you go back you and see we instructed read and then the next step it was the waiting for the memory function complete and along with that they are putting y in y in means here at this moment i won't discuss why you need the y in okay but you see y in will come you just remember this one i'll explain in the next slide next to next slide why, why this is required other everything i explain why you need pc out mar in read select for and so on so why in is has different significance i will explain not this uh, now now what do you have to do 
the data is will be ready uh, will be ready from here this is this is done data will be ready where it will be in mdr and that has to be brought to it will come to the where instruction has to decode it for decoding the instruction it should be stored in the instruction register so this is ir so data from here it will come here only so therefore mdr out because after this operation data will be available here so mdr out and it will ir in now data is here and <coughs> and what program counter value is changed it become 2000 to 2004 what next this is the instruction now it will be decoded here after decoding it realize it is a add instruction it is not only that that other operand is there in the location r3 r3 is a memory location so then what you should do again you need mar that will be filled with the value of r3 so therefore r3 will be out mar in and again it is a read operation because you are bringing data from memory so mar in and then read while bringing the data from the memory to mdr what we can do it i have the another operand i can pass the operand r1 to the register y why because this one what what i want to do so this is done now i want to do r1 should be added with the contain of the r3 so what we do it r1 we put out and we store into y y in so now r1 so let's say this is r1 so this will come here but memory data yet to come within this data is available here one operand is available here and after that what we can do it after the after this one what we can do because memory function complete is done now data is available to mdr now you bring the data to mdr directly to this location for adding r1 with this location so therefore mdr out you select y select y means this one earlier whatever you brought earlier step that is nothing but the r1 and you add and z in because whatever you are brought, you are bringing for mdr now it is available here so it is coming b here and earlier r1 is coming from here now you add them so this is addition operation you are doing and where you want to store z in so you put z in and in the next step when data is available here so you store into the register r1 so therefore z out r1 in and the instruction is just executed so th there are seven step for this instruction so if we put forward the question is like that so i want to add the two numbers so and that addition is happening here but before that there is one more addition here okay so why i am doing addition here is it the right question okay thank you so yeah so here is the answer what do you want to do we want to add contain of r3 with r1 and it will store to r1 each instruction has a first phase is fetch first step is fetch that means you have to bring the instruction and then is decode during decoding it will realize what is the instruction what the instruction is and if there is need for any operand that should be brought also okay and we also know that program counter hold the address of the next instruction so let's say this instruction started at the location 200 and next instruction will be 2004 so ideally during fetching the program counter value will be incremented by 4 so incremented when incremented the addition operation right so and for any kind of operation if you want to do that should be done in alu okay so therefore if we want to get 2004 from 2000 
So we have to add 4 and addition should be performed in ALU. So that is why we use add again I, 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 I state this part here. What I want to do? I want to bring the date instruction from the memory to processor. So what is that? So that is PC out whatever the value of PC, what is the value of PC? It is 2000. So that will go to MAR, so this is 2000, so that is a memory location. So this two part is done and it says ki I need the value or I need the data which is located at the location 2000, so up to this one is done. Now in the next step actually program counter value should be 2004 because next instruction also will be executed. So therefore we need to change the next step is 2004 for that is the preparation part for that. What do you do it? Select 4, it will come 4 here and it is already entire bus is there, is, this is also 2000. So now I activated add operation, so it will be adding, so it will be stored in here is 2004. So that in the next step, whatever the value is in Z there, so that will be stored into the program counter. So that is happening, Z out, PC in, wait for memory function complete but why in I did not describe, you have to wait another 5 to 6 minute. So next what, what is that? I have to bring the operand. So operand is there in which location? That is R3. So and it is a memory, so therefore R3 will be populated with MAR, sorry, MAR will be, MAR will be filled with the value of R3 out because this is R3 and then it, this is also a read operation because we are bringing data. And while it will wait for the data to come, processor can do your internal operation. So what is done is whatever the value R1 that is passing to Y. So that is we are doing R1 out is passed to Y in, in. So that whenever data is available to MDR that can be passed through this line and another operand can be passed from this line. So therefore MDR out will come directly here select Y means this value earlier we had R1, so that will come, so that will come here and then we perform the add operation and result will be stored into Z in. This all operation can be performed parallelly, sub operation. So later on basically what we want to do, MDR out should be 1. So later on we will see control unit nothing but these are the all are variable. And whenever we want that this should be on, so that put, we put on, that we will see later. But first you understand this part. And then whatever the Z out value, it will be stored into R1 in and that is all. So one instruction is completed. For the next instruction, program counter value change and then for any instruction, first three steps are same. There is no change. So therefore, if you are asked to instead of add R3, R2, if I ask in the exam that add or subtract or multiply R4 with R5, what you do it? First three step without understanding also you can write, it will be true. At least you, it will get, you will get half marks. Okay. So first three step will be that is the instruction phase, it will be same and it changes after that. Decode whether it needs the operand, so it will bring the operand and then operation will change. So, whenever actually we execute the instruction in sequentially, Y1 is not important, but you do not know actually whether in the next instru instruction it might be a sequential or it may be a branch. If it is a branch instruction, it will have, it will have the important because sequence will change, program counter value will change. So now this is a for a say sequential execution, now if we move for the branch instruction. As I said, there will be two branch instruction, one is conditional, another is unconditional. Uncondi unconditional is much easier than conditional. So a branch instruction replaces the content of the program counter with the branch target address, which is usually obtained by adding an offset x given in the branch instruction. What, what does it mean? We write jump 2050 and this location let us say 2000. 
while executing this instruction program counter value changed what will be the value of program counter it will be 2004 and where to jump the location is 2050 so compiler what compiler will do it will compute the offset what is the op offset here offset is you have to go 2050 now you are in 204 2004 so offset is 46 positive 46 it can be negative also so program counter value is 2004 so you add 46 that's all again addition will perform where ALU. so then what you have to do you have to bring the offset and you have to bring the program counter value so what is done nicely if you go back now program counter value is already changed what we are doing program counter value we are passing here along with that we are, we are passing here. So, we do not know actually whether next instruction will be branch or not. If it is a branch, then instead of taking the value here, we will take the value from here, this, this place and offset you need, you need to add the offset. How do you get the offset? After decoding only, it, you will realize this is a jump instruction and offset will be within the instruction. So, offset will come from here. So, then offset will be directly coming from this place and then earlier value that is 2004 will come from this place and then we will go for addition. I think this is too hazy. So, offset is usually the difference between the branch target address and the address immediately following the branch instruction. So, that will be done by the compiler. So, that will be there compiler it that within this instruction jump offset will be 46. The things which can be done during compilation will do it and then then it rest of the thing it will be done in the hardware. Compilation how it will be done? We know that this is a jump instruction and we know what is the location of the jump instruction relative address not the actual address. There is two terms one is relative address let us say I, 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 I started writing so this is the location so let us say 100. I wrote one instruction, then 104, another instruction, 108, another instruction. Okay. So, instead of 104, I can write this one. What is that? So, this is 0, this is 4, this is 8. Okay. So, now if I place this entire instruction in a memory location starting from 1000, 1000 it will change 1000, 1004, 1008 and so on and you do not know. Now, you execute this program, it was memory location starting from 1000. But after some time if you execute, execute program will be loaded in other place. So, that will be decided based on the dynamic process. So, this is something called the relative. So, this relative address is like compiler knows that which is jump instruction what is the next instruction and then simply it sub, subtract. So, therefore, offset is decided and offset is incorporated within the instruction. Now, I know the what is the program counter value, it is also changing, program counter value is not the relative address. If you put the ampersand A, that is actually relative address. What is done is, now that you have to add the offset with the current program counter value. So, current program counter value is changed, we put PC out, so that value is loaded and the same value is I am bringing to Y in. So, that offset I can add in the next step because offset only will be obtained after decoding the instruction. So, this is the branch instruction. What do you do it? First step is same, all three, whether it is branch instruction or whatever, it is the same thing. Now, I will explain what is the need of Y in. So, we got the offset field, let us say this is 46, and we have to add and z in add is what add with content of y in so there should be something called select y c select y so what is happening here so let us say is, this is a simple instruction because this first three steps are same for for any instruction what i did in between i put y in here so y in here means this is 2004 and here also 2004 and this is actually a jump instruction. So, after after this step it realize it will go to IR and then it, real, it, it will realize it is a jump instruction and 
therefore, and it will decode that these, these are the thing that is the offset. So, it will come 46 from here, that offset will come here. So, it is here, it will come in this place, that is 46 and from here it will come 2000, okay, 2004. Now, what do you have to do? To get the jump location 2050, so you have to add. So, that is we, we add it and then we will store to the program counter, here we go. So, offset is this one, we add it, JDIN is enable, select Y and next what you do, program counter value will change. Whatever the value of Z out, then it will be loaded with program counter. So, that is for the jump instruction. So, it is unconditional jump. So, in next day we will be talking about conditional case and book I am following amateur. <laughs>